man. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Fight. Hey, what's going on, everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans, and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today we're joined for a very special edition interview with video game legend Ed Boon. He's the programmer, voice actor, and director best known as co-creator of the iconic Mortal Kombat fighting series and his latest game, Mortal Kombat 1, is set to release on September 19th. Ed Boon, welcome to the show. Very happy to be here. Uh, a little nervous, but... Uh it looks like fun. All totally normal reactions. Yeah, yeah. You know, everybody that comes in here, they're always nervous. But before we get started, how are you around spicy food? Like, do you reach for hot sauce naturally? No, I am at the lowest end of the spicy food. And, and it's not like I dislike it. I just have a, uh, uh, a very low tolerance. So this should be interesting. <laughs> Okay. Is this one supposed to um, hit in right away, or just just uh, the lowest end? I think you were a hot sauce guy all along, Ed. You know, you just didn't know you no, had no, it. No, no, no. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. <laughs> yeah, it's good. So. When we had actor Kumal Nanjiani on the show, he put forth this theory that video games are the only medium in entertainment that get better year over year because of the technological advancements. Is somebody who's had their hands so deep in the video game honeypot since the 1980s, does that at all resonate with you? It does. Um, the first Mortal Kombat game we started in 1991 was four people, right? Um, <clears throat> All right. <laughs> uh, it was four people, one programmer, two artists, and an audio guy. The newest one is literally in the hundreds. Technology has created an opportunity for us to make the most elaborate sets. We have actors, directors, animators, audio engineers. It just, it just goes on and on. So the scope is a hundred times, I'd say maybe, as big as the, the very first one. And uh, it's all technology's fault. <laughs> for better or worse, <laughs> yeah, for yeah, better yeah. or worse. Yeah. Is there anything that you miss most about the old days? And then what are you so happy that you don't have to deal with anymore? <sighs> what I miss the most about the old days is if you have an idea, later that afternoon you can see the idea you know, come to fruition, right? You can just see it uh, done. Now if you have an idea... Six month lead. <laughs> oh, oh, at least, at least. It's like, it's like you know steering the Titanic, you know, you want to take a turn, you you plan a month ahead and then you start turning. Uh, so it was, uh, there's something about uh, having an idea off the top of your head and being able to do it now. Now it affects, you know, 30 people and you have to borderline get permission to do it before you, uh, when you do it, even in my position. And here on the Five Wing Gauntlet, we're doing some time travel here, all right? Yeah, we're going yeah. from number this one to number five. Yeah, this right. is the one I'm getting uh, nervous about. <laughs> oh, that's nothing. No, I'm sure it's gonna <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's gonna hit. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it do taste good. It is nice, and I'm kind of hungry, you know? I don't always come in here hungry, but when I do, it is kind of nice, you know, to have the meal here. Okay, I, I'm uh, suspicious, because I, <laughs> I, I thought I'd be cracking on the second one for sure. You're going to be good. You're going to make it all the way through <clears throat> with not an ounce of sweat on you. Right. I can see it already. Right. I'm going gonna, gonna to regret this. You got it. You know, I'm fascinated by guest characters, you know, having RoboCop on there, having Terminator on there, Spawn, Freddy Krueger. What kind of characters do you look for when deciding to bring a character from another universe into the Mortal Kombat world? <laughs> That's actually, um, it's it's a lot more, it's not technical, it's just childish. We all, <laughs> That's we, how I like it. That's how we I like all, it. We all grew up uh, watching movies from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. From our standpoint, it is, wouldn't it be cool to see Terminator fighting Scorpion. Wouldn't it be cool to see RoboCop fighting uh, Sub-Zero? And it's as, as, as basic and simple as that. There's no science to it. At some point, um, there's legalities. Can we get the license to it? Can we do this? Right. But, but in terms of 
where the idea comes from, it's, it's, it's a bunch of adults who are still Trapped in the 70s trapped watching trapped tough guy movies. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and want to see who would win in a fight. It's that, it's that simple. So this one is the spicy shark here. Uh-oh. Again, am I... Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> no. So this is I just one... just answered my question. It's kind of sweet up front. And it almost makes you think, oh, did I grab the w wrong wing? There? Yeah, yeah, it, it does. And oh, then man. the second you think that, the door slams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But still going back in. I love it, Ed. I love it. <clears throat> well. <clears throat> so one of my favorite things that's come out about the new game is that you'll actually have a Jean-Claude Van Damme skin for Johnny Cage. That's right. Can you talk about how that came to be? Because I imagine that this is a very validating full circle moment, you know, it 30 is. years in the making. It is when we, uh, oh man, that's <laughs> kicking in. Um, uh, when we made the very first game, our original intention was to make Van Damme the arcade game, right? We, we, we actually, you know, wanted to see the words Van Damme big there. And again, Bloodsport was big and Universal <laughs> Soldier, I think it was. Um, so we, we called his, his people and we're like, you know, we want to make a game based on Van Damme. And um, I, I don't know if he declined or, or it just never got to him or something like that. But again, this is, this is a bunch of, you know, a couple of 20 year old kids, 20 something year old kids wanted to make a video game. I could see how Van Damme would go. Nah, no, yeah. no, we're not doing this <laughs> and, and not knowing that. So we tried a, a number of times going back and forth with him. This time we, we hit the lottery and we got him and we actually have his voice and he's gonna be the Johnny Cage character. And it is, like you said, it's the absolute full circle moment that we had. What do you see as the significance or the role and narrative in a fighting video game like this? So that's actually one of the hardest things about writing the story is, you know, we're gonna give the player like 30 fights. So you have to come up with 30 confrontations that'll be um, that'll be uh, uh, enough for a reason to fight and we've we've kind of gotten we, we've we've stumbled a couple of times like we'd have you know Johnny Cage is hitting on somebody and and, and Jax is like you know hey cut it out hey I'm just hitting on her okay let's fight about it you know <laughs> <laughs> that's not a really good reason to, to, to well listen uh, fights to happen that way exactly. fights happen that yeah, way, at a bar know? or something yeah. like that but but uh so we've had some really kind of silly ones and we have to but yeah the, the story's main function is to create conflict and let the player resolve the conflict by beating the crap out of the other okay. the other character yeah. <laughs> it's only right yeah, yeah. All right, Ed, are you ready to move on here? This is the bomb beyond insanity. Oh, man. So this one is crazy. Yeah. Okay, I'm just okay, okay. letting you know okay. off the bat. All right. And it'll be pretty immediate. You won't have to wait for this one. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, I gotta take a second. Whoa! <laughs> Finish him. And uh, he reaches for the I think I'm gonna the join you there, <clears throat> by the way. Wow. That, yeah, that's the spiciest thing I've ever had in my life. <laughs> so like me, you're an alum of the <clears throat> University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. We were talking about it a little bit outside. I know uh -huh. that you graduated with a degree in mathematics and computer science. I'm curious, where did you think you would go next? I can't imagine you thought like in 1986 that you were going to be a video game developer. What'd you say? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, no, no. In 1986, I absolutely knew I was going to be a video game you developer. Know. Yeah, I knew. Wow. I knew... Um, I think when I was like 15 years old or something, uh, a game called Defender came out. And um, Defender, Pac-Man, wow. Yeah. <laughs> and um, it was, um, God, it actually gets hot. I know, and it doesn't stop, and then you talk. <laughs> you talk, um, and you know, it provides yeah. uh, some oxygen to the fire. You know? And at the time, um, Apple had released, you know, the Apple II, so, so people first got 
computers in their hands. I had this 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 Atari 800. Oh my God, it's even hotter. <laughs> and um, and uh, and once I put a pixel on the screen and moved it over, you know, to me it was like you know hitting a note on a piano and realizing you can hit three of them and make a chord. You can do this and you can compose and. It was a big moment of like, wow, this is what I want to do. And I always, I always assumed that um, I would be working at a bank, right? Writing, you know, um, some kind of software and then making games by myself, you know, on a, uh, as a hobby or something like that. And it turned out that it was, um, I, I lucked out and I got a job in a pinball company that was also making video games and that was, I've had one job my whole life, right out of school. I made one resume in Champaign, Illinois, and I've not made one since, <laughs> you know, which is crazy. Yeah, yeah my lips are burning. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ed. Ah, okay. <laughs> So it already has it, but you dab a little Just more Just a little on it. dab, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. There you go, uh -huh. perfect. Cheers, Ed. <sighs> what okay, a ride. Cheers. Wow. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna regret this. Sharp. Hits it right away. Yeah. But Ed, you don't have to eat anything else. You did it. You know, you walked in here a little bit nervous. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> but to close things out, Mortal Kombat's made such an indelible imprint on me and so many in my generation. And here we are, 30 years later, still galvanizing players all over the world. So to close things out, with your brain on fire, mouth ablaze, I'm going to hit you with a Mortal Kombat rapid, rapid fire. Rapid fire. Okay. Where did the get over here catchphrase come from? Get over here! We were in the studio. Literally off the top of my head, I was like, hey, let's have the guy throw a spear. And, and as I was kind of miming it out, I had said, you know, then he pulls him in and he says, get over here. You know? <laughs> and at that point, we, did, we weren't thinking of it. Oh, that's, that'll be a catchphrase. But later in the, um, in the audio uh, recording, I was there doing some grunts and groans and, and decided to yell out, get, you know, get over here. That's my voice. And then um, that's basically where it came along. Do you have a favorite piece of uh, <clears throat> Mortal Kombat memorabilia or a keepsake that you've collected over the years that's most treasured to you? Yes, um, I didn't know it existed, but when they made the first Mortal Kombat movie, for some dangerous reason, they made a Kano knife, this gigantic, not safe knife, and they branded it and they put it and they sent me one. And I'm the opposite of somebody who uses knives, but it's it. it it's really cool looking. <laughs> and then, so uh, that's my favorite one. Off the top of your head without thinking about it too much, do you have any sort of an idea for a hot sauce fatality? Um, this one, and uh, I, I would say, you know, just force feeding it to, uh, to, to, the, to the loser. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what, Ed? We could not finish him today because he took on the wings of death, lived to tell the tale, and now there's nothing left to do but roll out the red carpet for you. This camera, this camera, this camera, let the people know what you have going on in your life. Um, we have uh, September 19th, we have Mortal Kombat 1 that is coming out. It is the 12th version of Mortal Kombat that we are calling Mortal Kombat 1 because we've reset our story telling it from the actual Big Bang, and you will see a brand new origin, brand new timeline of a Mortal Kombat universe, and uh, as many cool features as we've ever added, and uh, we can't wait for players to check it out. Can't wait to play. Good job. Man. Oh, wow, man. <laughs> My nose is starting to, to, to run. I'm glad. I'm glad. Uh, we finished just in time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna. Oh man, flawless victory.